Hello, it's Aga from Arvis Artist. Today I'd love to show you how to replace the sky in Photoshop. It's a quite common technique and it can help your images, so be sure you know it. I show you how to replace the sky based on the image from our visualization training. I put the link in the corner in case you want to check it out. Anyway, first of all, let me show you how to save the file correctly. To be able to replace the sky easily, we need to have an alpha channel. You have a couple of options here. You can save the image as an AXR and it will have the alpha channel information included. Or you can also save the image as an PNG, but remember to have alpha channel checked. You can also save the image as a TIFF, but also be sure to check STIR alpha channel. I prefer to use an AXR, so I will open it in Photoshop. Let's go to the Channels tab. If you cannot see it, go to Windows and make sure you have Channels checked. Next, click with Ctrl on the Alpha channel. So everything that is white will be selected. You can go back to the layers and click on the mask. Here we go. We removed the rendered sky from the image. If you click with Shift on the mask, this red cross should appear and you should be able to see the image without the mask again. I drop the sky I've chosen before for this image and I adjust the size. First, we need to set the horizon in the correct place. Let me help you with this. We can use the ruler, so it will be easier to adjust. Now, let's adjust the photo more or less to match the horizon. We can turn off the ruler's preview by using the Ctrl plus semicolon shortcut. Next, we can drag and drop the sky layer below the original render. We can move it slightly down, so we will see only this black tree here. You can see that we have the white pixels around. It's because we had a bit brighter sky before. I will show you a fast technique how to get rid of this. Copy the layer and turn off this one. Next, click on the mask and choose apply the mask. Then go to layer, matting, Choose the fringe. We can try one pixel. It will help clean up little residual bits of color that have been left behind on the image. Here we go. Magic, isn't it? Make sure you are in the 16 bits channel mode so we can use all the adjustments layers. Go to Image, Mode, choose 16 bit channel, and don't merge. Now it's time to adjust the image to the render. Okay. First of all, we need this sky much brighter. We can use curves to do this. You can see that it matches much better than before. You need to remember that your sky needs to more or less match the original sky, so it looks natural. You can see that the original sky gave lots of blue color in comparison to the replaced one. So either we need to adjust the sky to the render or make the render much better the sky. Here I adjust the render to the sky a bit. Let's use curves to make some color adjustments. If we click here, the adjustment layer will work only on the layer below, not the whole image. Go to red. If we move the point up, it will become more red, so it matches the warm sunlight. And I reduce the blue color a bit. You can see that we added a bit of warmth to this image. Ok, now we need to add some final adjustments to everything altogether. So now we can select all layers and merge the new ones together. Ctrl plus E. We can group the original ones. Ctrl plus G. Now let's convert the layer to the smart object. 
Then go to Filter, Sharpen and choose Unsharpen Mask. Let's slightly adjust the amount and radius to get a more detailed image. Ok, you can select all with Ctrl plus A and then go to Select, Transform Selection. Scale the selection down evenly. To do this, you need to additionally hold Shift and Alt. Now we make the selection more smooth by using the Feather Selection option. Shift plus F6. We can increase the value here to make corners more rounded. And now, let's use curves to make the center of the image brighter. Next, we can click on the mask with Ctrl, and then use Ctrl plus Shift plus I to invert selection and use curves again. But this time, we'll move it down to achieve darker corners. This is a before and after. We can also add an extra curves layer to adjust the general contrast and brightness of the image. Actually, I think we need to make it brighter. I think we should make it also a bit less saturated. It adds a more natural look. Lastly, let's add some LUT to stylize the visualization a bit. Hmm, maybe this one. It will add a more elegant look to the image. Of course, it's too much, but we can decrease the opacity. It has become much more consistent now. Let me show you the whole progress. Awesome! Do you like this technique? Do you use it often? Let me know in the comments, I'm really happy to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, also don't forget to like this video if you found this interesting, share it, subscribe and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video!